Hello, brothers and sisters. I'd like to speak to you this morning about St. Peter. As we live in this Easter season and within this octave of Easter, it's good to consider this first Pope and Prince of the Apostles. Uh, you can see in the beautiful stained glass window we have in our church of Our Lady of Lourdes, his uh, keys that he has in his hand, the keys of the kingdom of heaven, as we can read about in Matthew 16, how Jesus had given him to the keys of the kingdom. But then also his other hand up as if he's in a sense gesturing people to the kingdom of heaven. I'd like to, uh, I guess, speak about the rooster. You are familiar with the rooster crowing, uh, and from especially Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday, the narrative of how uh, St. Peter had said he would follow Jesus to the ends of the earth, and Jesus warned him, he says, before the, the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. And this is what St. Peter did. Remember, imagine what that would have been like for St. Peter to hear a rooster the rest of his life. He would have had memories that took him back to that, that dark night, that sadness of how he had followed Jesus while he had been captured. St. Peter warming his hands by the fire. And just with strangers in the street, he, he denied Jesus three times. And he says, I don't know the man. Remember that? Again, what, what would that would have been like the rest of his life to hear a rooster crow to be reminded of that you denied Christ. Um, <clears throat> I, in li living at St. Patrick, uh, when I was in Wichita, we had uh, roosters crowing all the time, and uh, a lot of times it kind of reminded me of this this scene in the gospel. Uh, and thinking about that, what would St. Peter have thought in hearing the rooster the rest of his life? But there's something else to consider with regards to the rooster. Uh, a rooster crows in the morning. And he announces the dawn, he announces a light coming. And so in some ways, St. Peter may have had a memory that was bad and dark, but also after the resurrection, after he saw Jesus risen from the dead and having spent time with Christ, eaten with him, you can read about that in, in the Gospels, um, and likewise the Acts of the Apostles, Jesus showed that the light could not remain in the darkness and that Jesus came in mercy. As we look forward to Divine Mercy Sunday, uh, we celebrate the fact that Christ came among them and said, Peace be with you. And the light has risen. And Jesus invites St. Peter to come back and to, in a sense, make up for those three denials. Remember on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, Jesus says, Peter, Simon, uh, do you love me? And St. Peter says, Of course, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus says, Feed my sheep, tend my sheep. He says this three times to him, in a sense, allowing him to make up for that which we, he had denied in his denial before when Christ was taken captive. So St. Peter allowed that grace that had been given to him, that mercy and that recommissioning as well as the power of the Holy Spirit to lead him forth and to continue to spread the message of light. And especially through that mercy, it invigorated him and strengthened him. Um, St. Peter and the early apostles, uh, St. John, uh, continued to, to spread the message about Christ after the resurrection and especially after the Pentecost. And you can read in the Acts of the Apostles, I really want you to encourage you to read that. Uh, the, the, the readings that we had had during this last week of, of Easter week uh, in the Mass. It's, it's just kind of a sadness for me to not having been able to celebrate those days of Mass with you. Uh, and hearing about the, the accounts of St. Peter and how he and St. John uh, had gone to the temple area to pray at 3 o'clock. They continued to, to uh, live their, their faith. And out in public, they weren't afraid anymore after having seen Jesus and being given the gift of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. And there we hear, we, if you were paying attention to the Mass readings this week, a beautiful uh, story of how uh, a poor beggar from uh, uh, paralyzed from birth or, or crippled from birth was brought to the temple area. Every day his, his friends or family, probably his family, would bring him to the, to the temple area to beg. For, for money, for sustenance. Imagine what that would have been like for this poor beggar every day. When I lived in Mexico uh, for four months studying Spanish, when I went into the churches, in the, in the, especially the cathedrals, there were always beggars out in front of the churches just sitting there holding their hands out. Uh, impoverished people, uh, even elderly, uh, with worn, uh, crippled hands. Um, and it was always very, very in a sense, touching for me. And that's what St. Peter and St. John experienced in seeing this, this poor beggar. And 
they looked down at him as he was looking up at them and then they said we don't have silver or gold to give you but but what we do have we will give you and what did they have they had the power and the love of jesus christ within them and, they, and so peter looks at him and says in the name of jesus the nazarene i say to you rise and walk and he did this man who had been crippled from birth stood up and walked I mean, here in the, in the scriptures, uh, later on, he, he clung to John and Peter and wouldn't let them go. He stayed with them. He, continued, he was a disciple of Christ because of the power of Christ working through them. And, and it started bringing many people. They, they realized this poor guy was there every day, and they saw him no more sitting in front of the door. They saw him walking and standing and, and, and praise God. And so they, it brought many followers to the faith. And... Because of that, the Jewish leaders uh, of the time uh, had uh, it really caused a consternation within them, and they, they brought James and, and or they brought John and Peter in and questioned them and tried to tell him not to preach in the name and that name anymore. And Peter's like, "Are you kidding me? Of course I'm going to continue to spread the name of Jesus. I'd rather obey God than man." And so. Uh, because of the, the, the followers of the crowd and so forth, the, the Jewish leaders cowered uh, in fear. Different than what St. Peter and the apostles earlier had done. They had cowered in fear, afraid of the Jewish leaders, but now it was the opposite. They, the tide had turned. Uh, the power of the light, the risen Christ, was, in a sense, in their favor at this moment. And so nothing was going to make them afraid anymore. Uh, Jesus had risen from the dead, had spent time with them, and had given them the power of the Spirit. The mercy of Christ had rested upon them, and the power of Jesus risen was to be theirs to share with others. Peter uh, continued to boldly proclaim the name of, of Christ, he continued to spread the faith. The early apostles uh, gathered many believers, uh, thousands of people were starting to turn to the faith, and they weren't afraid anymore. They weren't afraid of the Jewish leaders, they weren't afraid of anything. Um, eventually, at the time of uh, Peter's um, questioning in Rome, uh, later on in his life after his ministry was finished, uh, the Lord, uh, as he had warned Peter, uh, the Lord warned him earlier in the passage about how he would go where he, uh, he had not necessarily uh, intended to go before, and, and they would lead him and, and bind his hands and so forth. Well, he would suffer the crucifixion like Jesus himself. But unlike Jesus, St. Peter said, I'm just a slave, I'm a servant of the Lord. And so they, they crucified him upside down, which is the, the, the uh, Roman custom for a slave. Uh, because he had made that comment about simply being a servant of the king, a servant of Jesus, of, of the Lord. So he was crucified upside down, right near St. Peter's Basilica. Uh, if you go to St. Peter's today on the south side, there's uh, right inside of the, the, the um, place where the Swiss guard stands guard all the time, there's a spot on the ground where the obelisk had stood, an obelisk that was there, that tall spire in the middle of St. Peter's Square, was actually there at the time St. Peter was crucified. It was actually a, a, a Roman um, uh, chariot circus at the time. Uh, so it was kind of like this, this place where the chariots would, would race. And that obelisk was there in that square uh, from a first century BC, before Christ, actually before St. Peter. So Peter, Peter would have seen, seen that obelisk and he was crucified upside down there in that, in that spot. Um, but Peter was not afraid again. He wasn't afraid because he had seen Jesus risen from the dead. Uh, sure, he had denied Christ, uh, as all of us, in a sense, are guilty in having turned away from the Lord because of our sins. Uh, hearing that rooster crow uh, reminds us of that. But the rooster crow also reminds us that the life would come, the life of Jesus, that his mercy do, does endure forever. The power of Jesus, risen from the dead, alleluia, shine forth in the apostles, may it shine forth in us and through us as well. So as we hear the rooster crow, may we perhaps remember that we have turned against the Lord, but God's love endures forever. His light has come and he has risen and he calls us to share in his mercy and to inherit the kingdom of heaven. The apostles testified to it with their lives by dying for the faith. They were not afraid and neither should we be afraid of anything, coronavirus or anything. We need to Follow the advice of the health officials and so forth. Maybe keep our social distancing and sheltering at home, but don't ever let anything make you afraid because Christ Jesus is risen. Hallelujah. God bless you.